I know that there's a, always it's always said that there's only one thing better than playing the hero, and that's playing the villain. And I don't know whether there was a great joy in, in sort of getting into this character, Lord Blackwood, or whether it was hard work. No, it's it's great. I was uh, I always think the villains have a more they're more, more psychologically demanding because you've got to work out why they are the way they are. We all just accept that uh, good guys and nice guys are just that's the norm. And somehow somebody as evil as this guy, you've got to kind of work out where it all comes from. And I, I, I love doing that. I like the fact that it, here's a character who has to spread fear and panic and, 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 and basically try to bring England to its knees through sheer kind of, let's say, you know, scaremongering. So yeah. in a way, you're like the Daily Mail, but in human form. I don't know what <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure that's a compliment. Um, yeah, he, he realises that uh, the way to get everybody on side is, uh, you know, power dress, he's got some fantastic threads, uh, and uh, scare the living daylights out of everybody by, by, by appearing to be in league with the devil. And uh, what the reference points for you, a very, very broad term for people who haven't seen it yet, you could almost be somewhere, obviously it's Victorian era, but you could be somewhere between Darth Vader and Paul Daniels, but with Hitler's hair. I don't know if there's certain, <laughs> certain aspects of it. You said, well, there's certain people I kind of have in my mind here as I, as I go down this path of, you know, evil dictatorship. I'm glad you, you spotted the hair because we went for a kind of Prussian thing, you know, that shaved thing here, but uh, it's, it's quite severe. But that, I don't think that existed before. It's, it's kind of too early for it. So he's actually a trendsetter as well. Um, uh, yeah, magician element, more kind of Alistair Crowley, you know, the, pay, the guy who dabbled in the occult and loved that whole pagan thing and slightly bafflingly weird guy. And also a bit of the Count from Sesame Street. Good man. Did you spot that? I did not spot that. That yeah. was a nice one. But that, that idea of being a conjurer of expensive tricks, I don't, did, you, did you go into that world in a big way? Because I guess you know, magicians certainly have a, a very strong belief that you, you have to be uh, well gifted to be in their world and all the rest. I don't know whether you felt the need to kind of get into their particular stance, their particular kind of uh, methods. Well, I kind of realized that the Victorian period threw up all those escapologists, those hypnotists, you know, circuses were popular, showmanship was big, the empire was huge. They were very confident, the Victorians. So, I think it wasn't, uh, I didn't really need to look at magicianship, but I had to look at showmanship. And I think this guy obviously is selling uh, an image of himself uh, as this, this guy in, you know, who's in league with Satan. You've had a great run, I spoke to you for Body of Lies, but you've had a great run of movies with, with Sunshine and Stardust and Miss Pettigrew and Rock and Roller and, and, and The Young Victoria. And I don't know whether you feel that you're, you're kind of getting ready for your, for your close up and that you know, you'd like to sort of go over there to LA and, and start doing the lead thing or whether it's just you feel well the work will be the work whatever you happen to be sort of offered you're happy to go this direction or that direction or I tend to read scripts and just take what I like I, I have no plan I mean it's wonderful to be able to do these big American movies and shoot them here you know Robin Hood's coming up and John Carter of Mars next year they're studio pictures but they're all filming in in and around London so I can be at home with the family which is great but having said that I've just been over in Ireland doing a film with John McDonough, Martin McDonough's brother with, with Brendan Gleeson which is a, a very low budget very wicked funny story about guys importing drugs to the west coast of Ireland and I've only got a tiny part in that a couple of scenes and for me it's not important whether it's a big part or this part or that but I just sort of gravitate to what I think I will have fun doing and can do something with. Well, I was going to mention the guard with Brendan Gleeson. You have way back with, with Saoirse Ronan, I think. You've mm -hmm. got Kick-Ass as well, The Eagle of the Night. I mean, just looking at the amount of movies you have, I don't know whether you're, you actually get to sleep at all because it does seem you've had seven or eight movies coming in the next 12 months or, or thereabouts. Does it feel, well, this is my time. I should really you know, take the work that is out there that I like and, and not, uh, you know, not worry about things like sleep? Well, there's a bit of that at the moment. I mean, t t it's wonderful to be kind of offered this kind of stuff. And I'm a bit like a kid in a sweet shop at the moment. And I'm just finding these fantastic roles and these fantastic scripts. I wouldn't want to sit at home planning a campaign of how I'm going to get an Oscar. I mean, I'm not that kind of actor. I'm not. I'm genuinely not interested in that kind of stuff. What I love is being on a film set with intelligent people making movies. And when these things come up, I uh, I just take the opportunity, whether it's big, small. Uh, what's great is that they're all near here. I mean, the idea that suddenly I might have to go to New Mexico to film for six months might get a bit tricky. But for now, I'm getting the opportunity to play these wicked characters, which I'm really enjoying. Rock and roll. I'm giving the friendly finger. Let oh me yeah. talk to you. Yeah, yeah and you, and you. Cheers.